Hey guys, Dip the Awesome here to give you yet another Monster Legends event informational video where we take a look at a new event and kind of talk about the rewards uh, and how it works. Uh, usually in the order of what the event is, what kind of event is it, explaining how it works, and then, it <laughs> then the rewards. Uh, but yeah, this is the Titan Invasion event. Uh, this is considered a new kind of race, a team race specifically. Uh, I don't really don't even want to call it an event, uh, not an event, a race, because it's so much better than that. It is so much better than races. I think it just deserves its own title altogether, like Raid Bosses, or like Team Raid Boss. Yeah, that, that's a cooler name, Team Raid Boss. That's really all this really is. Uh, it's its own original idea. Uh, but it is considered a new kind of team race. Uh, the only similarity in all honesty to uh, team races and this thing is really just the quests. <laughs> and, and that's really it. That, that is the only similarity uh, between the two. And I think it's this, this is way easier in terms of getting rewards than team races easily, hands down. This is an easy way. Uh, this is not an easy way, an easy event to get monsters. It's, it's way easier than team races, or at least in the way of saving gems. I think as so as long as you participate and use the right team comps or like team monster comps, I, I think you can dish out so many points before it starts getting difficult in terms of quests. It's, it's easy. Uh, it is a really easy event. Uh, and each time you can attack the thing, it lasts for four hours. So if everyone's organized, if everyone's doing their part, uh, this is this is the ultimate test of seeing if people are actually playing or not based on your team score. Uh, I will say this event is more reliant on what you actually have versus your gems in your wallet or uh, really just getting a uh, quest done because it's not about getting laps done. This isn't this has nothing to do with laps. Again, the only thing that was similar to team races was the uh, quest. The quest there are quests in this event. Uh, but beyond that, you, you don't do laps to, to get the rewards. No, it's based on how much damage you do. <laughs> it, it has nothing to do with, you know, just by completing quests, you get a lap done. Uh, it, it's a lot better than that. It's so much better than that. In fact, it, again, it deserves its own, you know, title like raid bosses, team raid bosses. That's so much better. That is so much better. I really wish people didn't even compare it to team races because it doesn't deserve that kind of notoriety. It, it deserves its own notoriety. It deserves its own original idea name uh, because it is its own original idea beyond just the team quest. That's that's really the only thing. Again, that's the only thing they have in common. Everything else, it's its own original idea. So again, in order to progress through this event, you need to do as much damage as possible to the Titan. And it doesn't even matter if you kill the Titan. In all honesty, if you're really, really active in this event, I, I think the Titan only drops like a million or two million points. I, I don't know if that increases every time it dies. I, I have no idea. But I do know that it, it wasn't as much as the points that we accumulated for, for, for that first monster. Like the first time we downed... Like we, my team actually killed the Titan, but compared to how much we actually earned, it wasn't all that much. So it isn't really a game breaker if you do, your team does wind up killing the Titan. It really, I don't think it really matters. <laughs> uh, based on, just look at the, basic look on the team comp we have against, look at the second place guy. They only have 8 point, you know, almost 500 million points. We have 20 million. We're already at the three rank 3 mark. We've just been doing damage all day to it. It had nothing to do with gem spending at all. In fact, we've done all the gem. You know, all the all the quests we've done are easy. <laughs> there was no no epic breeding quest uh, as of late. This the way we're at right now is all based on the damage we have dealt to it. Again, it's all based on damage dealt. You get more points for the damage you deal. Uh, basically, we're running damage dealers that just do damage, uh, and or supports that amplify the damage. That that's really it. <laughs> it matters on participation, and. I will say if you have extra copies of a really good monster like Totem, for example, this event is very ideal for you. You will get so much points if you have a bunch of Totems. If you use just like a Totem, an attacker immune to possession, you, you will do just a phenomenal job in this event. It's easy. Easy, 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 easy. And that's uh, in Varv as your support, you just have an easy time. Again, easy, 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 easy. Uh, 
quests are really simple. It's usually just breeding, it, uh, making runes, or first person and multiplayer. You know, all that fun stuff. I have yet to actually see an epic breeding quest, but I'm pretty sure we'll see that in later fights. And the thing with that is, by that point, in all honesty, by that point, we, we will have so much points that we, we won't have to do it, because they're so far behind uh, in terms of points at the moment. I, I suppose it, there's still plenty of time to, to get points. I'm just saying... It seems unrealistic that they'll catch up at this point. We're just too far ahead in points. Our team is too uh, is too active than all the other teams to get ahead. I, I could say that's a, that's a thing people don't like about this event. It's based on not only participation, like actual participation, which is what a team you know a team event is. <laughs> it's participation. Uh, but this one really sells it. Uh, where team team effort is a thing. You need to be on this game to get anywhere in this event. You need to help your team out. That's how this event works. This is an this is a legitimate team effort event. This is this, you need to be here. You need to do attacks. You need to attack this every time the attack budget has been hit. Uh, it, it's stressful. <laughs> it is honestly stressful because you've been beating on this monster for hours, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's addictive. It's fun. It's fun fighting this thing. You're fighting it with friends, and you're doing damage to it, and it's so much fun. So incredibly fun. Uh, I'm going to start talking about how incredibly fun it is, and just you guys want to learn just how to do it. Again, uh, you just want you just straight up, you want to do a bunch of damage. That's the main thing. So if you have things like Barber Toes, uh, Razul isn't too ideal because he does damage to himself, but if you can find monsters that kind of make up, can kind of heal up that damage and be okay with that... Uh, that's that's all right, uh, but mainly you just want damage dealers. Damage dealers, and if you're not running a full team of damage dealers, you run like a totem in Varv, and uh, you know a damage dealer immune to possession. Because if that damage dealer gets possessed while having totem buffs, you're gonna die. <laughs> you, you straight up lose all your progress, and it's it's bad. I I did that a while ago, and that's why I can't really show it in this video, but. Uh, it's not a good idea to have your attacker not be immune to possession. It's, it's not a good idea. Uh, but ideally for this event specifically, you want something that's immune to possession. You do not want it to be, you know, you don't want anything to be possessed. It's really bad for you. Uh, again, it's just all about damage. So comps that give increased boost in damage. Fenrir and Reptile are also golden supports in this event. Really just any support that deals increased damage. Uh, Incognita, Ukaduma with his efficiency, uh, you know, efficiency to give double dam, you know, not double damage, uh, you know, damage boost, but also having double damage in his ultimate, uh, sustain utility purposes. I, as far as I'm uh, concerned, shields are really good. Uh, the warrior is really good on this event. Atlas is really good. Anything that taunts, anything that can keep anything off that you need is really good. Uh, so things that give immune to possession and immune to dark damage, especially Jowstar and Scrap are really good saviors in this event. They make you immune to dark damage, they make you immune to his ultimate, which is huge. The ultimate of this monster will kill you if he does it. <laughs> that's, that's what it's designed to do. It's kind of like their way of saying, alright, th you've, done, you've done all you, that you could, now we're just going to squash you. But there's really a way to safeguard against that and you can just keep attacking it. Uh, for the rest of that 10 minute mark. Each fight you do is 10 minutes, and there's really no cooldown. Uh, there's a cooldown on your monsters, but you can attack, um, attack it as much as you want and get as much points as you want. And that's again another thing what people are kind of upset about, <laughs> is the fact you have to keep attacking it to get anyway. But in all honesty, that's the event. That's that's what you do. And it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It's not like team, te like regular team races, like where you get angry, it's like, oh, someone complete the note. That's really... That's really not like it in this event. It's really not about completing quests. It's not about completing nodes. There, there are no nodes. I don't even know why I said nodes. There are not, there are not any nodes. There's this quest. You know how in team races where they usually just complain about, oh, somebody complete the node, you know, skip the node. There, there is none of that here. <laughs> there is only quests. There, there are no nodes. Once you, once you complete all the quests, you attack for four hours. You don't even have to see another quest for four hours. It's lovely. All you see is this majestic giant beast that you're trying to kill which which sounds messed up but that's that's the actual realization of it you're trying to kill something with the life of a god uh <laughs> which it is it's a, it's a space god uh so let's talk about the rewards right real quick uh this is 
uh, IOFX or uh, Ninefax or something. Uh, I like to call him Beefalo because that was his original name. Uh, from now on, I'm just going to refer to him as Beefalo. That was his plan to original name. Uh, it was leaked like for weeks and people were upset that they changed it because it was such a good name. It was an extremely good name and they just changed it. Uh, so I'm going to call him Beefalo. Beefalo here is pretty alright and pretty awesome in the competitive scene because he is in the Dragon Book, he's in Evil Legion Book, and he's in the Superhero Book. I think that's huge. <laughs> he is in the Superhero Book, and I think that's huge. And I think the, the Dragon Book too. It's really important that he's in the Dragon Book because that way he can counter Mountain Zuma. Mountain Zuma is a really good monster in the game at the moment. And to have a counter for him is nice. It is really nice. Like, I don't have Mountain Zuma obviously, so I, a Mountain Zuma could counter a Mountain Zuma. But I don't have a Mountain Zuma, so everything's just terrorizing. Uh, you know, Mountain Zuma's just terrorizing all my defense teams. This would be a good thing to put on defense. It's really good. Uh, it has an extra return skills, uh, damage boost, access to recovery, life regen, self buffs, uh, AoE, special base damage. I, I don't remember if he had life steal. Uh, but he had an AoE possession. Uh, I guess you could say really basic stuff, but they're really fun stuff. This monster is a bunch of fun. This, this thing is nothing but fun. It's fun fighting it. It's fun, you know, getting it. It's going to be really cool having it. And it's just a really cool design monster. It's really, really cool. That's all I have to say. That's, that's like the whole event. It's cool. It's new. It's fresh. It's really awesome. <laughs> uh... I think his I think his possession was the ultimate. I, I I don't think so. I think that was a regular skill actually, and I think his ult. I don't know what his ultimate does. I, I honestly don't know. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. This, this monster is nothing but fun. Its base stats are also exceptionally well too. I I don't think they're too broken, but they're all in the 30 30ks, and that's really good. That's nothing but good. You know, like at least they'll have three three thousand for the power. You know, around the three thousand. It was like uh, 3,454 for the attack, I think, or what's the, they have the speed. But either way, or it's, again, still a really good monster. It's really, really good. Uh, I don't exactly remember the base stats too much, but I know they were well-rounded and really good. Especially if you're getting this at rank 3. Uh, While well, you're also getting this, you know, for the second place reward, and also the reward that you also get additionally with first place is a rank 2 cryo's hand now a lot of people have this at rank 3 this was a recent team race monster and a lot of people are kind of upset of getting this because they already have this it, there's no point because they have the rank 3 there is a point and it's actually valuable that you do get another one because you can either a get that boy to rank 4 or you have another cryo <laughs> that, that's the that's the you know the situation uh, personally for me if I had another cry, if I already had a Cryotan rank three, and I was getting another one, I would save this one. I, I would save it for you know attacking purposes. I'd have another Cryotan on me. Cryotan's really good at denying uh, Mega AOE Mega Freeze Freeze for two turns on AOE scaling. That's stupid. <laughs> that, that, that's stupid. That's that's really good. Uh, you can choose to get this to rank four, obviously for increased. Uh, survivability on defense, like a rank 4 crowd tank can easily survive longer than a rank 3. Uh, but I, I would just, I'd just save it, f I'd just save, you know, both of them. Uh, I would, I'd use both of them. I'd have another crowd tank on me for offensive purposes, and I think that's lovely. But I, I don't have a cryotan. Me personally, I don't have a cryotan, so to see a cryotan available to me is really nice. I, I do appreciate that. It is really lovely. Uh, and to get that as a second reward is really not that bad either. This is a good defense monster. Run a stamina and two speeds and you're solid. It's just a really good monster. Uh, it, do it does apply self buffs to itself. And it does get increased benefits with its self buff. Because it applies like, like for example, double life. It has like a double life 50% uh, shield, I think. Or was it 100% shield? And I, I think it goes, like when you use, the, when you use it, you get the double life... And then, and then the shield applies, so it, it gets it gets a you know good sustain. Given the fact if your opponent allows it to sustain, it's got a good survivability. Uh, he has an insta kill freeze, uh, like after three turns, uh, the person dies, but those first two turns they don't exist to him. It's a mega freeze insta kill skill, really good. Uh, he's got taunt. 
which is amazing. He's got a extra turn stamina refresh skill, so it's really hard to drain this man completely. And it's really hard to get him not to use his uh, AOE Mega Freeze on you if they're building a stamina speed and another speed. It's really hard to do that. He's a really good denier at the moment because of that. He's also immune to freeze and stun, which are the common denies in the game. Most common ones anyway, and he's immune to both of them. So only possession really, really bothers him. Uh, but he, again, he has that extra turn skill, and he has like a like two like you know two other self skills. Uh, so a maximum of three self skills if you if you choose to build all three, plus is you know either his AOE or insta kill, just ridiculously good. Uh, for rank, well, in terms of third place, if you get to third place, uh, you get a rank one Krugbo. <laughs> uh, now, I don't know if this thing has been uh, in many events since its first event, which was the first Abomination. This was the last place prize for that, so third place winners get this. Uh, this was the last place prize for the maze event for it, uh, the Abomination maze. Uh, me, personally, I think this is a really cool monster. Uh, just how its form implies, it really didn't know what it wanted to be in the end. <laughs> it, it really didn't. It, it honestly really didn't. It's one of those confusing monsters where you want it to be a denier, but it, it's it's just not a denier. <laughs> uh, you want it to be a full-on damage dealer, it's just not a full-on damage dealer. It's really, really weird. It's odd. It's bizarre. It's also really good. <laughs> It's good, but not good. It's, 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 got, it's, 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 it's exactly how it looks. It's really, really confusing. Uh, it has a bunch of self-skills. It has... Uh, I, I think he had like a double damage self-skill, I think. I, I can't 100% remember. Uh, I do believe he had a stamina recovery skill. He had an extra turn stamina recovery. Great for countering Thetis. I do believe he was a Thetis counter... And I do believe he was a Krampus counter. I do believe that was the thing, too. Uh, if he got a turn in and he got to do the immunity to freeze. He's good against freezers. Uh, not against Cryotan, of course. Cryotan's too bulky for him. I, I don't remember if he had lifesteal. But I think I think his main ordeal is he had a bunch of self-skills. And, uh, like, a possession that did no damage. Uh, I, I think he had another one, too. I, I, I actually can't remember too much. Uh, but the main things I remember are the self-skills. He was a self-skiller. And he had possession and, you know, being able to climb out of, you know, Thetis shenanigans is pretty neat. Uh, nowadays, there's relics for that, so he's kind of lost value. Uh, but he's still a really good monster. I, I'll say he's not a bad reward. Uh, rank, I mean, places 4 through 6 also get a Krugbo, but this one's not ranked. I will say... Uh, I will say out of all these, this is the this is the last uh, exceptionally good prize. Uh, Oxtech is all right, but compared to everything else, it's 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 meh. I mean, but it is still a good monster. I will say it's way better last pro. You know, it's a way better last place prize than uh, Apex. Way better. Remember that team ra last team race with the uh, last place being like Apex? Yeah, this Oxtech is a thousand times more useful than Apex. W easily, 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 easily. Uh, I'm just saying, like he's not as good. As the other monsters given because all these monsters like th this one has a you know abomination this one has mountain and again this one has abomination too <laughs> they're just really good defensive traits this one doesn't have a bad defensive trait either you know i'm kind of making it sound like this thing is really bad but he's really not all of his skills are spammable uh as far as i'm concerned he's one of the few monsters in the game that has spam all of his skills can be spammable so cooldown's activation does nothing against him uh he has dot potential he has uh the magnetism spiel uh i think those are the only things that actually have cooldowns are as aoe's yeah those are the only things that have aoe's you know cooldowns are as aoe's all of his single target skills are spammable spammable he's able to refill his stamina so he can keep attacking and he gains precision while doing that uh, he has single target bleeding, single target burning. Uh, personally, I run him with the stamina recharger, the single target bleed, the single target burn, and the AoE uh, metal damage skill that's 45 metal based. Uh, he was the last monster in the futuristic event. I do believe he was either the... I think he was the, I think it was the last one. He could have been the first one or the last one. But uh, he was really good regardless. Second to last, I, I'm not 100% sure. But regardless, he was pretty good. Uh, and that's that's it for the event. In terms of what you get, uh, overall, I will say, regardless of what place you get, you are getting something good. I, I will say that much. Uh, due to the fact we're getting a lot of cooldown activators, 
Uh, this isn't a bad monster. I, th I still believe Oxtech has relevance in the meta. Uh, he's got good spammable skills and good utility. Krogbo, while he's really odd, he does have cool uh, cool abilities that can be used offensively. Uh, Kyotan, Kyotan's Kyotan. <laughs> Kyotan's extremely good, uh, especially you're getting this at rank 2 when you get him. And then first place, you're getting both that and the Beefalo, which is extremely good at rank 3. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, extremely, extremely good. Regardless of what place you get, regardless of what you play, so as long as you just get, you know, so as long as you get passable, which 2,000 points is easily, easily, easily passable, you're getting a monster. You're getting something done. And I think that's amazing. So, yeah, that's everything I really need to say for this event. I'm Did the Awesome. I'll catch you guys later.